My name is Patrick Lucas, and I am Vice President Economics here at ACI World. I would like to shed some light on an important topic that sometimes results in debate and even friction in the airport airline relationship. This is related to the topic of airport charges. More specifically, I will focus on those charges that are levied on airlines for the use of infrastructure. At times, we observe certain myths and fallacies about the airport business in the media and in other fora. It is really important to dispel these myths based on a combination of data and sound economic reasoning. Now let's briefly examine the underlying uh, fundamentals of the airport industry. Airport traffic is a key piece in this story since it is the lifeblood of airports and vital for the various revenue channels. Thus, as traffic levels collapsed across the globe due to the pandemic, the impact on the airport business will also be considered in this session. If we look back at the last 10 years, it could almost be regarded as the golden era of aviation, with year-over-year -year growth of over 5% globally, with some emerging markets posting even higher growth. Nevertheless, there were still a number of events that still had an adverse impact going back to 2010. We had the H1N1 swine flu pandemic, we had a MERS outbreak in the Middle East, Ebola outbreak in West Africa, the Zika outbreak, terrorist activity at Brussels and Istanbul airport, a Russian and Brazilian recession, we had the Euro area crisis affecting European economies, and so on. Now, in contrast to the pandemic in 2020, many of these events were localized and passenger traffic continued on with a level of resilience through destination switching or, or quick recoveries. Now, an overview of the airport business and the core revenue channels is always useful to, to examine. I'm showing 2019 data because 2020 is obviously completely distorted. Globally, and this is based on over 900 commercial airports that we survey annually, 54% of revenues come from aeronautical sources, which is the darker blue portion of the donut on your chart. This is made up of passenger charges, which account for the largest share of aeronautical revenues, followed by charges levied on airlines related to landing, parking, terminal rentals, and other related fees. Non-aeronautical makes up 40%, so the lighter blue. And this is, this is made up of retail concessions, duty-free, car parking, real estate income, and so on. Over 70% of revenues are linked to passenger transactions and foot traffic. In fact, many hubs in places like the Middle East and, and Asia Pacific with higher passenger volumes actually have a majority share of revenues coming from commercial non-aeronautical revenue sources. Now, as stated, airports need to rely on an array of revenue channels to cover costs. It is important to note that the aeronautical side alone does not cover the cost of infrastructure. After non-aeronautical revenues, passenger-related revenues rank second, with revenues coming from airlines in third. In fact, aircraft-related charges and airline terminal rentals represent only 20% of all revenues. Even with charges primarily levied on passengers, the aeronautical revenue streams barely cover operating expenses, not considering capital costs. Now, this is why non-aeronautical revenues and commercial activities are so fundamental to the airport business. The freedom to develop these revenues in an unfettered manner is also fundamental, not only in diversifying the business and income channels, but also to cover the costs. Thus, regulatory accounting of non-aeronautical revenues also need to be scrutinized in this context. Here I'm referring to the regimes that require airport operators to allocate the net airport revenues from non-aeronautical activities as an offset or reduction in charges that, that are levied on airlines. But this is analogous to a subsidy from airports to airlines. The technical term for this is the single till or residual accounting method. It is born of a long-standing convention to support aircraft operators at the expense of infrastructure providers. Now, in the present day, airports are businesses in their own right. Many economists, airport operators, and a growing number of regulators agree that this method introduces price distortions and creates an artificial constraint that results in market inefficiencies, both for airport operators and their airline customers. Now, a movement away from single-till regimes 
will induce efficiencies and incentivize innovations on the commercial side of the airport business. Now let's consider the impact of the pandemic. If we take a retrospective look at airport passenger traffic, the previous downturns over the last decades pale in comparison to the impact of the pandemic. Unfortunately, the passenger traffic decline in 2020 brought us back to traffic levels from over two decades ago, before 1997. Fortunately, airports and the broader aviation ecosystem is resilient. We are in the business of connecting people, places, commerce, and cultures. This need will prevail. While we will get back to 2019 levels in a couple of years, it could take as much as 20 years or more to get back to the original trend that was forecasted before the pandemic. The crisis has removed almost 6 billion passengers by the end of 2020, compared to the projected baseline. So this again is the, the pre-COVID-19 forecast for 2020, representing a decline of 62% of global passenger traffic. Now, the lasting adverse impact of the COVID-19 crisis is forecasted to remove an additional 5 billion passengers in 2021, representing a decline of over 50%. Now, revenues are tightly correlated to traffic on both the aeronautical and non-aeronautical revenue streams. In terms of lost revenues, this represents a decline of 129 billion in 2020. The typical airport hub on average earns about 1.3 billion USD. So that is like having say the 100 busiest hubs, okay, having their revenues completely wiped out. Now, the challenge of our business is that airports remain capital intensive. Like other infrastructure intensive businesses, this means that there are high fixed costs. So at least 35% of costs are directly fixed. In fact, this is understated because many operating expenses also remain semi-fixed. So even with low traffic levels, there are certain services and utilities that need to be put in place to guarantee the safety of passengers, uh, but also for cargo operation. Now, given that travel restrictions have been imposed exogenously, many creditors and lenders have been flexible uh, with airports. At the same time, investors will require a higher risk premium which will inevitably impact the cost of capital. So airports carry this traffic risk mainly because the infrastructure they, they own and manage is largely in, in a movable fixed asset with limited alternative uses. While airlines have also suffered significantly from the collapse in traffic and financial fallout, by comparison, they are able to move around their assets and aircraft fleet to adapt. This inherent risk that an airport faces based on a fixed asset that relies on revenues from passengers first and foremost has become apparent. Now, this is a point that is especially important in the context of the airport cost base for regulated airport charges.